From the moment he took office, Governor Charlie Baker has promised to face the state's growing opioid crisis head on. In fact, it was a point of emphasis in his inaugural address. Now, last year, Governor Patrick called opiate addiction a public health crisis. He was right. It is a crisis. It's one that cuts across every community in the Commonwealth. As governor, I intend to tackle this problem head on. Last week, Baker unveiled his plan to do just that, and it contains some proposals which concern health professionals and some leading lawmakers. Joining me to talk about this is Mayor Lou Sutters. She's the Secretary of the Executive Office of Health and Human Services from Massachusetts. It's great to see you again. Thanks so Thank much. You. So the governor files this thing. He is celebrated for having confronted the thing, but a couple of provisions engendered concerns. You know, one is this involuntary commitment power given to doctors for up to 72 hours without a court order. Why do you need that, Mayor Lou Sutters? Well, we have an epidemic on our hands. Um, you know, we've talked about this before. Four people every day are dying from overdoses. Um, addictions is a combination of genetics and environments, and we believe that we need to have bold changes in the Commonwealth to start bending the trend. What's wrong with the current system? I mean, you, if there's a problem, go get a court order. If you get a court order, then you can keep the person as long as the judge says the court order uh, should extend. What's wrong with them? The court order is fine. Courts are only in business 8 to 4, uh, Monday through Fridays. And as we know, people have emergencies 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And so this really is meant to be really an opportunity in the height of someone being addicted in an emergency room for a, for, for a physician to make a determination that I want to hold this person in order to do an assessment and see if we can try to intervene so we can get them voluntary treatment. The Speaker and the Senate President seem to be concerned, at least preliminarily from what I read about civil liberty, uh, civil liberty concerns, which I assume you share. Of course. And secondly, there are some practitioners who say, that addict is not going to go get treatment and going to get care if he or she thinks I go in and I'm going to be held there against my will for three days at least. Where are they wrong? It's not really about where they're wrong. I think, though, what we want to do is to have a different conversation in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts about treatment of addictions. And we have civil commitment currently for psychiatric illnesses. Mm -hmm. In fact, every state in the country has civil commitment for the treatment of mental illnesses. This extends that commitment process for acute addictions and Massachusetts isn't really in the vanguard here. There's 30 other states that have involuntary... For addicts. For addictions, absolutely. So we're in the minority of states without it right now. Yeah. Hey, let's talk to this other 72-hour provision, limiting first prescriptions of opioids to 72 hours, yeah. first supply. Why can't doctors be trusted if they think that that's all the patient should get and that's yeah. all they'll give the patient? Well, so let me give you the statistic. I work for a data governor. Um, 4.4 million prescriptions written in calendar year 2014, resulting in, you ready for this number? 240 million Schedule II, Schedule three In Massachusetts pills. alone. For Massachusetts residents in Massachusetts alone. That in and of itself would suggest that we have too many pills in our cabinets and in, in people's hands. And we know that if you become addicted to this very, very potent painkillers, 40 times greater you're going to become addicted to heroin. So a senior breaks his or her hip, goes to the doctor, is in extraordinary pain, gets a 72-hour prescription, has to come back ha on the fourth day to get another prescription? Possibly, absolutely. So we're talking about the first time prescriptions mm -hmm. though, right? There's exceptions for emergencies, there's exceptions for palliative care, there's exceptions. Chronic, if there's a chronic absolutely illness. Absolutely for yeah. chronic illnesses. Are you, are you frustrated by the fact, I mean, you're facing what all of us rhetorically call a crisis. And I get the sense that there's some level of frustration that we all call it a crisis, but no one is willing to apply extraordinary measures to a crisis. Is that part of how you view this thing? I think how the governor and I view this is we have an epidemic. And so a lot of people are talking, right, are admitting there's an epidemic. And the legislature's quite concerned about this. What we're saying is we need some game changers here. We need to bend this trend. Some things that ordinarily you, the legislature, might not buy into but should buy into because of how serious the problem is. Absolutely. You know, let's move to something else that's not unrelated. I mean, my understanding is one of the reasons the caseload is up in the Department of Children and Families is because of people with addiction. That's true, is it not? Yeah, the number of children who are born with uh, substance exposed. Newborns. You know, I'm not the first person to say this, and I'm sure it won't be the last. It seems to me this is a, it's sort of like guns in America, is every time something horrible happens to a kid, 
we all focus on this laser-like, we're all wringing our hands, and then after a handful of days, or after the news at least is muted somewhat, we move on to the next thing and you're left to deal with it. That's a fair description of, how, of our attention span, is it not? I think usually when we have a child tragedy, we deal with the tragedy, and then as soon as the tragedy is over, it's out of the news, then we forget about so it. So why is this going to be any different? I know you and the governor have also done a comprehensive thing there. Why is this not just going to be more of the same? Because we believe that the systemic changes and issues in the Department of Children and Families need our attention, need to be fixed, and we need to stay true in the long haul, and not just when there's a child tra when not just when there's a child tragedy. But we need to fix the systemic issues in the department. We stood with the union, identified the issues, and you can hold it to us that we are going to make make these systemic changes. But the, the union, the head of the union, was here. Uh, I think it was the same day he did stand with you and, and the governor. And while I know there are going to be criminal background checks in 100% of cases, which is a great advance. Uh, uh, updating computers that are from the dark ages, ages. But if caseloads aren't addressed, which at least seems to me means more money, you're going to continue to problem. Let's take one example. Bella Bond, Baby Doe's mother. From what I understand, two kids have been taken away from her permanently. She has a third kid, yet there's not a caseworker assigned to her until that kid becomes 18. As a layperson, that means to me there just isn't the money for it. Am I wrong? Um, it's, you're not wrong, and the caseloads are a big focus of what we're, engaged, is what we're involved in. So DCF can hire as many social workers as they want. They have no cap on hiring social workers. We can't just social work our issue out there, of this. There's zone. enough money to hire more social workers? They, they have no cap. As the governor and I have said, we want... We, hire I, what you need? Is that what you're saying? Hire what you okay. need. We hired a medical director. First time ever mm -hmm. in the Department of Children Families, because these are complicated families, complicated kids, and we need to have the policies and procedures in place so workers know what they're supposed to do and how to understand what the needs of these families are. Why, if, I, if I'm not totally right, why wasn't there a, a social worker assigned to that little baby, Bella Bond, until or at least to her mother, until that kid was 18 years old? Well, I don't think we're going to have all the facts on the Baby Bella case until the child advocate releases the report. I'm actually being briefed on the Baby Bella investigation later this week, and then I, I think we need to have then a release of what all the facts are in that case. How do you deal, I mean, as a human, I, you've been in this at this for a long time, I don't mean working for this governor, but in this world, how do you deal with the pain in every direction that you've got to... I know you, obviously the hope is you're going to fix it, but isn't that like crushingly difficult to do? I take this, it's profound responsibility that one in four residents of the Commonwealth touch my secretariat. And from tragedies, they, they affect me profoundly. And what I need to do is be very focused on making the pragmatic changes we need to in order to mitigate the pain and suffering of individuals. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to get up in the morning. I take it very, very seriously. And do. Everybody wishes you luck, and I agree with you. Extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures. Good luck with them. Thank you so Mayor much. Mary Lou Sutter, Secretary of Health and Human Services.